Hi guys and today we will be looking at this Hornby locomotive and this Hornby locomotive is from 2014 it was announced or built and this is the K1 I think it's a Thompson K1 260 locomotive so it's a mogul um, I got this at a bargain price of £68 from TMC and um, £4 postage made it around to 73 or something like that uh, was a little bit more but it's still quite cheap for a highly detailed locomotive i can see this is in line to black livery with british railways on the tender which i believe makes it early so yeah this is um a loco that's been missing from my collection for a few years if i'm honest with you as an only often haven't managed to get one um till now with that really cheap price so we'll get into it and see what it's all about shall we Starting off at the detail bag, you do get quite a bit off Hornby if I'm honest with you. You get um, two lots of brake rigging, one for tender, one for the locomotive. You also get some intricate bits to add to yourself, like the drain cocks, some vacuum pipes, some air pipes by the looks of it as well, steps too, and a front coupling with which I wish they would add themselves in the factory. Personal preference, that's all. As we move on to the front of the locomotive, there is quite a bit to talk about here, if I'm honest with you. We do have metal and they are sprung buffers. There's a nice touch, I think it's turned metal as well. We also have which looks like to be a hook in the center, which is black. We also have two holes, which is for parts in a detail bag, which is the air pipe and vacuum pipe, if I've got the parts correct. The buff beam is in red. It is nicely done. Moving down, we do have some irons, or whatever you want to call them, to knock off stuff off the rails, I believe. I could be wrong. We also have a socket there for the front coupling. Moving up, we have a few steps going up to the chassis. We also have three lamp irons, but four lights. Uh, this must be electric light lighting on this locomotive. We also have some rivets too to go with it. We have a smoke box dart. We also have a step as well. And we also have the number of the locomotive, which is... 62006, if I've got that correct. We also have a lamp iron at the top, also we have a light as well, and a chimney. The hinges on the door are not picked out or anything, or the bracing not picked out, but it is there, um, it's quite nice. As we move on to the side of the locomotive, both sides of the locomotive are slightly different. We'll start off at this side first. The wheel configuration is a 260 rear arrangement, which makes it a mogul, I believe. And the um, linkages, linkages and all that and the rods are all nice, all metal and they're all uh, really thin and correct I believe. So there's a nice touch there by. We also have the lining on the locomotive. The locomotive is black with um, red and black lining on the boiler. And we also have some other lining around the locomotive which is different. The running board I believe is white. We also have a fantastic touch here which is a metal reverser rod. It is a nice touch. We also have, which I believe is um, a piping and a uh, handrail going across the medium of the boiler. Uh, they are correct and the hand handrail is metal. As we move on to the other side of the locomotive, these are a few differences like I said. We do have the number of the locomotive which is 62006. We also have some lining around that which is white, black and red I believe, could be wrong. We also have, um, which I believe are builder's plate and something else i'm not sure there's two plates anyway one's in a v shape and one's in an oval uh, one's on the bracing and ones uh, just below the chimney they are nice i'm not sure what they are i think one is the builder's plate if i'm honest with you we do have some sanding gear around here uh, on the on the chassis that is nice we also have um plastic whistle and metal safety valves uh, which is nice we also have a chimney and a dome as well to go with it as we move on to the part I think most people look forward to in a review, and that is the cab area. The cab itself does have glazing in every window bar too, which the crew can look out. It also has the guard to protect them. The cab itself as a whole uh, does have everything painted. Uh, there's even seats in there as well. Um, the dials themselves don't have any numbers on, but they have got a white background. We also have a regulator, which is red and it looks, like, looks to be separately applied. There might be wood flooring in there as well, and also the piping in there is copper. It does look really nice in there. Hopefully, I will get some good pictures for you. As we move on to the tender side, 
Both turn decides to me look exactly the same. I, I could be wrong. Uh, the axles and wheels and stuff down there is molded, but it's, it's there, it's nice, it's great. Uh, the tender itself is in black. We have the British Railways writing in the centre, which is crisply applied, like a lot of the other stuff on this locomotive from the um, lining as well to the cab detail. Everything in there is crisply applied. The lining on the tender, which looks to be white, black and red, if my eyes are correct. As we move to the back of the tender, there's quite a lot to see around here, surprisingly. We do have metal sprung buffers, and they're quite easy ones as well. The buffer beam itself is in red. We also have a hook as well in black. We have a vacuum pipe, which is fit to the back, not the front. A little odd. We also have a small tension lot and NEM coupling as well, already fitted. Moving up, we have lights on the locomotive. We have four at the bottom where the lamp irons are. We also have some steps, a handrail either side and a handrail going up or piping, I can't really tell. We also have another light in the centre with a lamp iron as well at the top. And you can also see the um, start of the coal bunker itself. As we do a bird's eye view on top of the tender, we'll start with the where you put the water. There's two little handrails on there as well, or handles, depending on your preference. The top is in um, black. We also have a dome in the centre. Moving across, we also have a coal, which I believe is not removable steadily, but it doesn't look too bad, if I'm honest with you. Looks correct a little bit more. Then we also have what we can see, uh, some cupboards and stuff for the firemen near the end of the tender. As we do a bird's eye view on top of the locomotive itself. On the cab area itself, it is black. We do have a few rivets. We have a vent or a hole. It doesn't move. It's not important to me. But it is there. It is nice. It's cool, uh, crew some cool air. Moving across, you can see the lining a lot better up here. I think it's red, black and red. It does look nice. We have a plastic whistle and metal safety rod, like I said before. Then we also have some rivet stuff or weldy stuff on top. Not quite sure what that is, but that's, that's there. Moving along, we also have a dome, which I believe could be separately applied. And then we have a chimney as well. I think that dot in the centre could be a superheater. I am a little unsure. And then we have the bracing for the front and then we have the buffers of the locomotive. As we do an underneath look at the locomotive. As you see here, the locomotive is a 260, which means it's a mogul. I did say that before, but just to show you even better from this view. We do have one, two, three, four screws on the base plate to take off. Hopefully this one isn't hardwired. It shouldn't be, and it should be the contact ones. The six driving wheels do have pickups, which is always great. And there is some underframe detail that I can't really mention in the video because I don't know what to do, but they are there, and support beams and support rods and all the rest are all there from the cab to the loco. It is a nice touch. And finally, as we move on to the connection and the tender. The connection from the tender to the locomotive is fantastic. It's, it's the good old Hornby plug and screws. Um, it is nice. It is, I do prefer it over other ones. This is my favourite version that manufacturers do. And this works a treat. I do believe that the wheels do have pickups inside from what I can see. I think all six of them actually. So it should be quite good going around the track with all these pickups. We also have the holes there for the brake rigging as well. And I also believe this is where you put the sound in. We also have a water scoop as well. And we have a small NEM coupling as well to finish it off with. So yeah guys, that's it on the tracks. Uh, next up will be second radius and points test. I think it managed all of them pretty well with all the pickups it has. So here goes.
not bad. What's that? About 20 on the controller. Pretty good actually. It can do smoother, but just not cost them points. Seems to be a common feature of my locos. So yeah, it managed that pretty well if I'm honest with you, probably could do it a little bit slower. So next up is some slow speed and a mini running session, so here goes, let's see how well it can do, shall we? What's that? Just before 20 again? Speed up. Yeah, it's pretty good for DC, for analog. It does actually look nice in black actually.
So yeah guys, that's the end of the running session and stuff. Before I give you my opinion, I'll show you what it ran with. Um, as most of you have probably seen during the video, just a random mix of freight. Um, so yeah, looks quite good on freight. I believe it, used, it can do um, passenger locom uh, work as well, but it doesn't scream passenger work to me. It screams freight. It could just be me, um, but yeah. Uh, my opinion on the locomotive. Highly recommend these, if I'm honest with you. I know um, there is one in, one preserved in real life, and that is at the NR, NRM, or North Yorkshire Motor Railway. One or the other. It's there. I know it's preserved. I've, I don't know if Hornby released it yet. I know a few people would like, like it out, but I don't know. Um, highly recommend these. I've had no issues whatsoever with mine. Straight out the box. Perfectly smooth. Across the points, no issues. It's just so quiet. I wish I uh, bought one before, if I'm honest with you. That, that good. I don't think it needs uh, retooling it anytime soon. What well, it's coming around to, what well, it's just done 15 years or something like that. Um, five years. It's very, very um, good locomotive. Highly recommend it. Lots of pickups, what it needs. Lots of detail. Cab is fantastic. And so yeah, it's at a bargain price, if you shop around, uh, you can find a few bargains. Um, Kurnow have some as well, but there is a little bit higher than this. I think there's around the £80 in the bargain page. So yeah, just, just shop around if you really want one, you're not going to pre-order anything. Just, just shop around and see what you can get. Highly recommend these. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Please take care.